All right, is my microphone on? Yep. Okay, so my name's Anthony Lusardi. Bob actually already gave a better intro of myself than I could have given, so you now know who I am. I'm the former director of the ETC Cooperative, and I'm currently working on my own startup, but I won't bore you with that. I'll get down to talking about the state of Ethereum Classic. What's your startup? <laughs> uh, I, I, I can talk about it later if anybody's interested. So anyway, uh, ETC actually started off the year with what a lot of people thought was an absolute catastrophe, the 51% attack, uh, essentially what had happened. And we were actually writing about this and trying to talk to exchanges before, telling them your security model for trusting uh, different proof of work networks isn't correct and you need to adjust it. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of exchanges didn't listen then and decided not to. So the ETC network had a couple 51% attacks that affected a couple small exchanges, but otherwise the network itself just kept on chugging along. Uh, when 51% attacks happen, they really only happen to those receiving payment. They don't really happen to the network itself. The network itself resolves itself over time. And that's the type of thing we were trying to communicate to the exchanges prior to this happening was that you need to give the network time to resolve itself to reach a final state. Uh, and they just weren't doing that. And very oddly, I don't understand what happened in this 51% attack, but the attackers had returned most of what they stole to the exchanges they stole it from. So if anybody's interested in doing any data analysis out there or looking at the, the chain back then, I have a ton of logs, and if anybody's interested, please reach out to me because the entire thing was bizarre. And also, just FYI, I've included emojis so that if you're not familiar with any of these things, you know exactly what to feel on each of these slides. <laughs> so on this one, though, we can be nice and happy because ETC got a new test net called Kadi. That was essentially where, on the Ethereum side, there were a lot of developers trying to bridge the parity and geth proof of authority test nets because POA is much nicer to use than POW for testing out your smart contracts. Uh, they had some difficulty finding funding, and so ETC Cooperative stepped up and helped out with that. And in exchange, we got a great testnet now, and Ethereum also got the Gorley testnet, which I know is also doing very well. So go try it out. If you're writing smart contracts, uh, it's basically the testnet to use. You shouldn't use the other one unless you're actually working on updating the network. And then on the opposite end, ETC's GitHub was taken from the original owners, uh, and the original owners would still like it back. I hear that there may be some sort of resolution coming from Bob. Uh, we'll see. This is actually really interesting, too, because there was never just one GitHub. You know, we have others. Now we have Ethereum Classic, ETH underscore Classic, ETC Labs Core, and I'm sure there's some others out there that all represent ETC. And Bob actually talked about this before when he was saying Masari goes to one GitHub and can't find everything. It's because ETC has this very distributed network. Uh, essentially, when ETC started, and a lot of people who have left ETC and joined ETC, they all work towards this vision of no one entity has control of all the kind of somewhat centralized components that are built around this network. And so when this happened, uh, a lot of people were upset. Some people are still a little uh, unhappy with it. But when it happened, the network itself actually stayed very resilient because there was no, there's no one group that can ever unilaterally, unilaterally uh, make a change on ETC or you know, gain control of the whole, whole network, which I think is really great, really shows how uh, anti-fragile ETC really is, despite its relatively small size in the space. And then you know, we also were, work we were working with the Ethereum Foundation, especially back when I was at the ETC Cooperative, and I'm looking forward to hearing what new things come out, but uh, I think we've started a great friendship. As Bob said, you know, Virgil invited me to EdCon. Then I invited Bob to the ETC Summit. And I'm sure somebody here from the Ethereum side uh, will get them to continue the, that chain. And it's really been great, too, because a lot of people, when they hear about working together, they say, oh, the chains can't work together. We can't sing Kumbaya around the campfire and just you know, kind of uh, hold hands and sing songs when we don't agree with each other politically and even technically sometimes. 
But the fact of the matter is there are occasions where working together just makes a lot of sense, especially when it's something purely technical. So where I hope to see ETC working together more, again, is on those things where the, the things we're working on are simply things that benefit everybody. We don't want a situation where one side is benefiting more than the other. And I personally think that when it comes to the non-technical parts, the politics of ETC and other blockchains, it's really a great opportunity to export those to groups that otherwise would have remained very insular and not seen uh, the other side and other opinions. So really happy to see that uh, we've done some great work with the Ethereum Foundation and really hoping to see more in the future. And then we had the Atlantis hard fork. Bob already touched on this quite a bit, but it brought ETC's opcodes to, Ethe I mean, Ethereum's opcodes to ETC. And it's just improving the dev workflow. Uh, I'm somebody who works on smart contracts, so it's nice to have tools that just work out of the box, and now they just work out of the box, which is always just great. And lastly, I'm just giving a very short talk here, talk here but we have a lot of builders. Uh, ETC Labs are starting on their second cohort, which have more companies than I can keep track of, so I apologize for not mentioning you guys. Uh, we have Chainsafe, Ethernode, and others that are all building cool tools. We have Afri now, who's, uh, who does a lot of management for Parity, but now is helping out with managing a lot of ETC releases. And we're really, really lucky to have Afri. Uh, just him alone is a great addition to ETC. And you know, we have Wei Tang, who I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. He works on Multigeth and proves how similar these networks are. Uh, Multigeth is just a small patch to Ethereum's geth that makes it work on ETC and other networks. And it's, uh, it's just a, it's crazy to think that uh, we each had to maintain our own for so long when these networks are so similar that you can just patch geth to work on ETC. And you know, also out of ETC Labs, getting a lot of cool new dev tools, Pristine, Jade Suite, and my own favorite, OpenRPC which is just a nicer way to interact with RPC APIs, uh, kind of get schemas for RPC APIs, which is really cool. And yeah, so that's my talk. I'm more than happy to answer any questions if anybody has any now, or if you want to stop me later and talk to me, I'm more than happy to. But that's the present state of ETC, and I'm sure you're going to hear a lot more in detail about all those components and much more over the course of the next two days. Thank you.